Hey everybody, part two of things you might need to do on your Lulzbot printers to fix them and keep them running or common things that come up that need to be uh, attended to. Uh, in part two here, we're going to change the nozzle on this TAS-6 with a Titan Aero Streeter. Same with my Lulzbot Mini or anything with an Aero Streeter. Uh, this concept is the same for a hexagon head. I have the arrows hooked up, so we'll do that since they're more common these days take you through the simple process on how to change them and how to swap nozzles on the fly. Okay, in order to change out your nozzle on your tool head, you're going to need three things. Number one, you're going to need a 7 millimeter socket wrench with ratchet. You're going to need the arrow wrench. You can get these parts here at Printed Solid. I'll put a link down at the bottom and you print the rest of this. Not required, but it makes life so much easier and a wet paper towel to protect your PEI surface if you drop a hot nozzle. So let's go through the process of changing out the nozzle on this. I'm going to switch it from a 0.5 to a 0.25 to do some really detailed prints tonight. So let's go through the process. A little disclaimer, it's not hard to do, but you are going to be working with materials or working near materials that, can, that are at 250C or higher. Work slowly, confidently, if you need to use leather gloves, I don't like to use them because you need the dexterity to install the nozzle. However, if you feel more comfortable having some sort of glove that's got dexterity might be useful to you, but please be careful when you do this. Things are hot, don't be dumb. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is if you happen to have a sock on your arrowhead, which is always a good thing, you're gonna need to remove that. So we'll go in here, assuming it's not hot. Just go in here and carefully pull that off, set it to the side because we'll reinstall it afterwards. Currently I have PETG inside my tool head here. We need to make sure we pull that out. So go ahead and depending on what material you have, heat your nozzle up to its normal running temperature for whatever material. So we'll go in here. You can use Cura if you want to. If you have an LCD, if not, use Cura or the computer that's hooked up to it. Go to nozzle. PETG is 245. Okay, we're gonna let that heat up to temperature and then just remove the material so that there's nothing in the tool head. Clean off any nozzle goobers that may have come out when it was up to temperature. And let's get ready to swap the nozzle out. Now, the way this works is, is we need to heat this nozzle up to about 280C. Why 280C? Because you have a brass nozzle with an aluminum block and they are different materials and in order to get them to expand at different rates, they have to be at a high temperature. We raise them to a temperature higher than what we print at, so when they do expand at like 245, they don't cause a leak path, right? So if they, if they get loose at 280, then at 245, they'll still be nice and tight and they won't have any leak paths. So in order to get this to loosen up, we have to heat it to 280 degrees C. So the key here is we need to heat it to 280 degrees C Immediately thereafter, once it gets the 280, you can leave it there for a little bit, you need to shut the printer off. Why shut the printer off? Because in Lulz bots, it uses conductive bed leveling. If you happen to leave the printer on while it's still hot and you touch a piece of metal to it the wrong way, you can short something out. So what we're gonna do is we're going to heat it up to 280C, we're gonna shut the printer off, and immediately thereafter, go in there with our socket wrench and loosen the nozzle up. Okay, it should be it should loosen up very easily when it's at 280C. Also, what I like to do is take the wet rag and put it over the PEI. Why? Because if you undo this nozzle and let's say it falls out of the socket wrench and lands on your PEI and it's 220C temperature, it could put a nice mark in your in your PEI. By doing it this way, it falls onto the wet rag, nothing happens because the rag is wet, and your nozzle is fine. So let's go through the process. Okay, we're going to heat our nozzle to 280. 
All right, we're gonna let that heat up. I'm gonna change angles here and we're gonna go through the process. Before you do this, make sure that you have it as lefty-loosey. It's set up the right way, not righty-tighty, so you're not rushing. This is correct. All right, we're at 280C. Let me clean this up one more time. There we go. All right, power off. Take your wrench, put it up in here. Like that. Put your socket on here. Lefty-loosey. If it doesn't come off finger tight, it's stuck. Okay, so it's still on there. I'm gonna take my socket wrench, go up here, and just using my fingers, finish removing the nozzle, cool it down on the paper down here. There you go, nozzle's removed. Okay, the nozzle's removed. Power was off, I have no risk of shorting anything out. So what I'm gonna do now is we're gonna turn the power back on, heat the nozzle back up to 280, and we're gonna install the new nozzle. This is where things get a little precarious, follow along. Power back on. We're at 191 right now. Gonna heat the nozzle to 280. Let that heat up. I'm gonna change angles and let's put the new nozzle in. And as it's heating up, being very careful, go in here and just pre-thread it just a little bit. Okay. You got some time before the nozzle starts to heat up, okay? The key is you don't wanna tighten it down while it's not at temperature because you wanna give it time for the aluminum block to expand and loosen up so that we can thread the nozzle in. Remember to change your ratchet to righty-tighty. Okay. All right, while we're at 280, you can go in here and start to tighten it up. Just finger tight. Okay, and we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna use our ratchet and our wrench. We're gonna turn the power off so we don't short anything because we're reaching around back on the backside. And we're going to tighten it up finger tight. You don't have to crank it down. Just a nice, easy twist. Power off. Get your wrench up there. There it is. Feel it. There you go. Perfect. One other thing you'll notice, guys, is you want to make sure that your nozzle does not bottom out on your heater block. You wanna have a gap because your nozzle throat should butt up against your uh, heat break tube. If you're butting up against the heater block, you're gonna have leaks. So that's a video for another day. As long as your arrow was set up correctly and to begin with, you won't have to change anything, but just make sure that when you tighten it down, there is a gap between the bottom of the nozzle and the top of the heater block. Last step. Go ahead and put the power off so you don't short anything. Go ahead and put your silicone sock back on. And there you go. That's how you change a nozzle. Pretty simple. Uh, two places you can screw up royally because from experience, I have done it. Number one, do not tighten a nozzle or try to unscrew a nozzle unless the, no or unless the nozzle is heated to 280 C. Don't say, ah, I'm at 240, I'm close enough. The nozzle will not be loose. You will try to loosen it up. Because it's made of brass or some other soft material, you'll shear it off in the heater block and you get to go buy a new heater block, possibly a new hot end. Number two, if you try to tighten or loosen anything when you're putting wrenches up near where there's um, things that you don't want to ground and short out, you can short out a fuse. Not an expensive part, but you now you got to do surface mount fuse replacement, which is never fun. It's much easier to make sure you turn off the printer. So, heat up the nozzle. Turn the printer off, remove the nozzle, turn the printer back on, heat up the nozzle, pre-thread it, being very careful of your fingers, turn off the printer, tighten the nozzle, finger tight with the wrench. You don't have to go in there and hulk hand it, just enough to get it snug, and then you're good to go. Hope this helps. Again, another it's another basic one, 
It's another basic thing we all have to do, but it comes up from time to time when you're new to a printer. How do you change the nozzle? And Lulzbot tends to, and lots of print manufacturers tend to scare you, saying things like, this will void your warranty. And it, just letting you, just being perfectly clear, it will void your warranty. But it's nothing to be scared of. Uh, it's very easy to do and it'll allow you a lot of flexibility in what you like to print. You can print very fine detail or you can print very fast. Um, you can change all the time. And now you don't have, you can have one tool head and multiple nozzles as a to buying many tool heads and each one having one individual nozzle on it. Hope you find this interesting. Hope it helps all you people out there that are just getting started in 3D printing. We'll see you on the next one. Guys, the other thing too is I showed how to do it with the nozzle swapping wrench. If you have a pair of, um, if you have a crescent wrench, an adjustable crescent wrench, you can do it the same way except you're going to need to remove the part cooling shroud. I have a print running in here right now, so I'm gonna turn the sound off, but in the next video clip, I will show you how to remove the shroud on a normal Lulzbot Aero tool head. Follow along, once you remove the fan shroud, then you can go in and get in there with a regular wrench, do the exact same thing that I took you through, and then put the fan shroud back on. This is only needed if you don't have the special wrench tool that I showed you. Okay, so you need to remove the part cooling blower and it's held on by two screws shown up here and here. So we'll use an Allen key and remove those. The part cooling shroud is held on by two screws located here and located here. So you'll need to remove those. Note that the screws are not the same length. The shorter screw goes in the back hole farthest away from you. The longer screw goes in the front hole. Don't get these backwards. If you have trouble putting the shroud back on, you can re remove the heat break fan by removing these four screws. They're all the same length, just keep them together. On Lulzbot Aero Extruders, the front screw has a red wire connected to it. Make sure that when you take it apart and put it back together, that red wire ends up underneath the screw head and the wire routes between the cooling blades. This is used for bed leveling. After you're finished with your nozzle swap and you don't need access to the heater block anymore, you can attach the part cooling shroud again, making sure the short screw goes in the back and the long screw goes in the front. Next, install the heat brake fan using the four screws you took off, being very careful not to cross thread into the aluminum block. It's very easy to do, so be very careful. Make sure the label is pointing inwards so that you don't put your fan on backwards. Finally, reinstall your part cooling blower on the front and using the two round-headed screws on the front, reattach it. That's all there is to it, guys. By removing the part cooling shroud, you have access to the heater block that you can grab with a crescent wrench instead of using the special tool. Hope this helps. If you don't have the tool readily available, uh, it takes a few more steps, but it's very easy to do. Until next time.